Um, all right. Well, I'm uh, I'm going to start off with uh, some questions. I'm pretty sure I already know the answers to, but the slide's already made, so bear with me. Uh, quick show of hands. How many people in here would consider themselves, say, uh, an expert in Ruby on Rails? Um, if you work in or around a marketing team, you may also call yourself a guru, a ninja. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, those that didn't raise their hands, I would say the extent of your expertise is more of an intermediate level. Cool. Uh, who would only go so far as to call themselves a beginner? Excellent. Uh, and uh, are there any people in here that are not already using Rails? Uh, somebody that would be more of a prospective Rails user? Definitely triggered. <laughs> My name's George, and uh, this talk is targeting those on the lower end of that spectrum. Uh, this is uh, trying to get a little bit of help for beginner Rails developers, uh, but hopefully it'll also be useful to the more seasoned developers, especially uh, those that find themselves acting in the role of a mentor. Um, when I started my apprenticeship, I was familiar with object-oriented programming, but I was learning Ruby and Rails and MVC all alongside each other. Um, and it was, to naive values, it was difficult to tell where exactly one ended and the other began. Um, so my hope is that this becomes the MVC primer that I wish I had when I was starting out. Uh, so with luck, You'll leave here with a new robust way of thinking about the separation of concerns uh, that beginning developers have to wrap their brain around. And I'm hoping to accomplish that by using a simple tool, an analogy. So without much further ado, I present to you. Uh -huh. I like the York there. That's very good. The theater of Rails, NBC for beginners. Applause option. <laughs> so, a little bit about myself. Um, as I said, my name is George. I'm a software developer at Moby. Uh, we help businesses manage their mobility programs, uh, things like uh, phones and tablets and data cards and whatnot. And one of the ways that we do that is through a Ruby on Rails uh, based software platform. Um, there's our logo. Uh, outside of business hours, I work on a startup called Your Kids Day. It's an online toolkit for in-home daycare providers uh, to keep their customers in touch with their kids while also reducing their operational costs. Also, a Ruby on Rails app with a, a mobile-friendly uh, interface. Um, and as if I wasn't busy enough, I've also joined the team that's opening a new co-working space and business accelerator called ZWorks on uh, the northwest side of town. Uh, it's going to be headquartered in downtown Zionsville. Um, so now that my clubs are all out of the way, uh, that's all what I do now. Unlike maybe a lot of you, I haven't always been a software developer. Um, in fact, uh, I was out of college for almost 10 years before making the jump to slinging code for a living. So uh, back in college, I did study a little computer science. But truth be told, I spent a lot more time studying the arts. Uh, in fact, I majored in theater. <laughs> this is the lowest quality photo that I have, but it's also one of my favorites. This is a scene from Romeo and Juliet where I played the balcony. <laughs> it's quite possibly my finest work. Uh, digging through these old photos for these slides, though, it reminded me, long before becoming a software developer, I portrayed one. Uh, this is uh, Jethro. He was a quick-to-anger, highly opinionated, caffeine-fueled blowhard. In essence, he was Java. <laughs> so I never set out to do it, but my, having this background, it helped me develop a new way of understanding how MVC works. Um, you don't have to be a theater nerd to follow this. Hopefully, I won't be throwing around many technical terms like proscenium or commedia dell'arte. Theater gets weird sometimes. <laughs> but here's the rundown. MVC, most of us here are familiar with it. You have your models, you have your views, you have your controllers. Three things seem simple enough. But to a beginner's eyes, when I was reading all the documentation, it wasn't so clear-cut to me. 
the Rails guides online, they say a controller's purpose is to receive specific requests for the application. Controller actions collect information to provide it to a view. It goes on to describe views as being purpose to display this information in a human readable format. Cool. So what does a model do? Uh, if you look up MVC on Wikipedia, you'll find a chart. Awesome. I speak English. I know every word on this chart, but it still didn't mean much to me. Um, so getting started, I, uh, I needed to find thing, something that would tell me more about the fundamentals, um, like where business logic lives and why does it live there and not the other two places. I knew there were these three big things, but their separations were a bit amorphous to me. So uh, let me switch to something that people have a little more familiarity with. Some of the basic things in a theater production. Just name some of them. Uh, you have your actors on stage. They're saying lines that they learned from a script. Uh, you have a director barking orders at rehearsal. Uh, unless it's a production of Our Town, you have a bunch of stuff on stage with the actors to make it look like they're in a park or in a house or in an insane asylum. Uh, with any luck, you've got an audience in the seats taking in the show. And this is the extent of the language that I'm using for this analogy here. So let's step through some of these theater elements. First, we have actors. In a Rails app, actors are the models. You see, different actors have different skill sets. Uh, some actors know how to juggle. Some actors know how to pry on command. Um, these, these skills are the actor's methods, if you will. Not to confuse them with method actors. But most importantly, these skills are the business logic. Uh, so in a given project, you'll find that some models are capable of a great many things. Uh, some other models are only capable of one or two. Uh, some seem to crop up despite not being able to bring much to the table at all. Um, and some, uh, especially, you get that case when inheritance gets involved. So the next one. This one's a little more easy. The stage. The stage and its set dressing are our views. Um, the, the stage is full of marks that indicate where an actor stands to deliver a line, or where to cross over to meet another actor, or where to interact with a prop. Um, in other words, the stage is full of predefined spots where actors do their things for the audience to see. More importantly, it's all bullshit. <laughs> It's all plywood and paper mache. Nothing's functional on a theater stage. Um, there's, if you have a kitchen on set, there's a faucet. And you may be able to pour a glass of water out of it, but it's not hot water. The refrigerator next to it may have a light inside of it, but it's not going to keep your beer cold. Everything on the stage looks the part, and that's it. And just like a stage, a view's beauty only needs to be skin deep. So that covers models and views. What about controllers? These are the people running around behind the scenes, getting stuff ready and in place for the next scene. It's the backstage crew. It's the props master. It's the casting director. It's the technical director. Uh, it's the, the guy in the headset saying, we need two jugglers and 10 townspeople ready stage left uh, because we're loading the index page. I've never actually heard that in a stage production, but it would be something like that. Controllers are the operational glue that ensure that the right actors are in the right scenes to deliver their performances. So that covers MVC. But what else do we have? Um, there are a lot of different things in Rails that are outside of the M, the B, and the C that I still kind of struggle to <coughs> differentiate. And so the following things are going to be a little bit more uh, coupled to Rails, but I still wish that I had this list when I was first learning. So we'll start out uh, with helpers. What are helpers? They're not models. They're not views. They're just, they're just kind of helpers. What else has that equally awkward and important relationship with both the cast and the stage? Props. Props are kind of like set dressing. They're not terribly functional on their own. Uh, they're traditionally utilized by actors. 
and they typically appear in more than one scene. Furthermore, if you're really careful and you decouple everything uh, properly, you can even reuse a prop from a previous production. I never noticed that. <laughs> PKE meters and they would have. Um, actions and routes. Uh, this is a little more specific on the controller front. Uh, I separated it out uh, so it's not cause too much confusion, hopefully. These are individual scenes. So for example, if uh, act one, scene one is interior kitchen daytime, and act two, scene, or act one, scene two is interior kitchen after dark, they both may use the same set, but they're certainly not the same scene. Different events take place in them, and different actors can populate the stage. And finally, what do we call the user? Now this part's just more of a mental exercise. It's a, an attempt to wax academic for old time's sake. Uh, at first glance, uh, I would look at it and say the audience, uh, the, the audience is the user, right? They're the ones taking in the show. Um, but I'd actually, on further thought, I would argue it's a little bit more abstract, that uh, the, the user is the one that's also calling up the different scenes. In a sense, they're directing the whole show. See, in theater, a, a director can't communicate directly with the audience. They have to use different conduits that go through the performers, their performances, the set dressing, the script. Our analogy has covered all of these resources except for one, the script. The order in which the scenes unfold, uh, the decisions the characters make, all of that comes from the script. And, and in theater, that's where that lives. In a Rails application, though, all of those things are defined by the user. The users, the script, as they navigate your application. So it's a bit of a whirlwind tour of both NBC and some of the theater. Um, especially if you're not acquainted with the parts of theater, I hope it wasn't too uh, too off the beaten path. The, the terminology was familiar enough for the analogy to take hold. Um, I'd love to discuss this more. I'm sure it's an imperfect analogy. I'm sure that I've overlooked opportunities to deepen it. You know, maybe a client-side JavaScript is the post-production process for film. Um, so I'll leave you with this quotation. I couldn't get through a theater-related pre presentation without some sort of Shakespeare reference. Uh, from his uh, As You Like It, he quotes, the fool doth think he is wise, but the wise man knows himself to be a fool. As software developers, we have a very fortunate means to earn a living, uh, whether it's by professional necessity or by uh, personal self-guided passion. We tend to be perpetual students, and uh, there's plenty left to learn. So sometimes it helps to revisit even the most basic of ideas, and I, I hope those of you that know their way through MVC forward and backwards at least pulled something from this. Um, Never stop learning. Thanks. I don't know if there are questions, but I guess it would be okay. Did you say what routes were? Uh, I kind of lumped them into the actions that they mapped to oh, yeah, yeah. With, uh, with being the individual scenes. I tried to come up with something discreet for them. It would have been a stretch. Thanks, guys. Yeah.